What's going on guys, Billy here, and when you begin to think about some of the components that make up a drone, you soon realize that a lot of them are really important. So for example, you need propellers and motors for the drone to fly, you need a remote controller in order to operate the drone, and there's one necessary component that requires a little bit more care and a little bit more maintenance, and that is the battery. I've got four Mavic 2 Pro batteries here lying in front of me, and what I want to do in today's video is go over a full guide on how to care and provide maintenance to your DJI Intelligent Flight batteries because these are are definitely an investment. They're very expensive. Each Mavic 2 battery costs $150. Some of the other drones that DJI sells, their batteries actually cost more. Like I believe the Phantom 4 batteries are up at around $180. But regardless, in today's video, we'll go over everything you need to know about how to care for these batteries so that you don't end up like me with three out of four batteries of your Mavic or of your drone in general that are swollen and unusable. Now, just to provide you guys with a little bit of a backstory here, these four Mavic 2 batteries have been used with my Mavic 2 Pro and my Mavic 2 Zoom for a little over a year now, so about a year and a half, and I've labeled them so you guys can see the manufacture date, so when I purchased them, as well as the amount of charging cycles that each battery has. So battery 2 has 106 cycles, battery 3 has 84 cycles, battery 4 has 106 cycles, and battery 5 has 92 cycles. Now you'll notice that battery 2, 3, and 4 have a little bit of a wobble to them, and that's because they are swollen, so these three batteries are unusable. They don't fit into my drone anymore and I don't trust flying my drone with these batteries and you should never fly a drone with swollen batteries. Now the one on the right here, battery 5, doesn't swell at all or doesn't shake at all and that's because it has a flat bottom and there's no damage to the battery whatsoever but I believe here battery 3 is my most swollen battery. You can just see the hump on the bottom of this battery and it's totally noticeable when you lay it on the ground and you actually press the outsides. Now as if showing this battery rocking on the table didn't make it abundantly clear that it is in fact damaged when I try to put it inside of my drone and after I'm pushing down very hard it still ends up popping up out of place. So it doesn't sit properly in the drone. This is a battery you definitely don't want to use because as it continues to get used and as it gets warmer during flight, it's going to expand and the battery will probably pop out of the drone, thus making your drone fall from the sky because it doesn't have a power source anymore. So this battery is toast. Battery two and four is toast. And that leaves me only with battery five. So I'm cycling one battery with my Mavic 2 now. And over the past couple of weeks, I've been doing a ton of research on how to properly care for your battery so that this doesn't happen to you. And what I want to do in today's video is share with you my information. So first, we'll go over some of the good practices that you guys can use to make sure your batteries don't swell or get damaged. Then we'll go over some tips for usage, and then we'll go over tips for storage and charging. All right, so getting into some of the good practices that we can follow to ensure we get the most life out of our DJI Intelligent Flight batteries, the first of which is to label and rotate your battery. So you'll notice I was referring to my Mavic 2 batteries as battery 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now I do this so I can coordinate which batteries which within my flight management software, but also when I'm flying, I rotate out my batteries. So if I have a flight during the day where I use two of the batteries, I'll know next time to not use those two batteries so I can ensure I have an equal amount of cycles across all of the batteries. Batteries. If you continue to use only two of your four batteries, well, those two batteries are going to go bad and lose their life sooner than your other two batteries. So it's good to spread it out amongst all the batteries you own so you're not consistently putting all of the stress on one single battery. Now, moving on, the next good practice to follow is to not use third party batteries. Do not use non DJI batteries because, first of all, it voids the warranty on that flight. So if you're flying with a non DJI battery and something happens, chances are DJI is not going to help you out when it comes to warranty warranty and replacement time or fixing time, but also I have just heard downright horror stories about people using cheaper, less expensive third-party batteries, some things like the terminals being totally fried. Uh, also, it could not let your drone take off, so it notices it's not a genuine battery. The drone might not even take off. And also, I've heard of drones just falling from the sky because the batteries don't fit properly. So, at the end of the day, do not use non-DJI batteries because the cost of a cheaper battery is not worth potentially losing your whole Whole entire drone. Now moving on to our third good practice. This is really par for the course for anything that charges and anything that has a battery. You don't want to leave your DJI drone batteries charging while unattended. Even though these are intelligent batteries and they have certain technologies inside of them to prevent overheating, short circuiting, and overcharging, you always want to keep an eye on your batteries because accidents can happen, malfunctions can happen, the battery could spark, the charger could malfunction, or even the outlet itself could go bad. You could start a fire, and I don't really 
really need to tell you what could go on from there. So it's really a good practice to make sure you don't leave any battery in general charging while unattended, especially these DJI batteries, and especially when you're using a hub because there's a lot of power running through that hub at one single time. Now, moving on to the fourth good practice on our list here, I really already covered this extensively. Do not use a swollen battery like battery number two here shaking all around when we have it laying flat. You wanna make sure you don't use swollen batteries because it's just not worth it. It doesn't fit properly in the drone. We already covered this. Just don't do it. Don't use any battery that is damaged because it could potentially ruin your drone and it could fall from the sky. Now, moving on to tip number five within our good practices, you wanna make sure you fully charge your battery before you fly. Now, this isn't good for the battery. In my opinion, you could start off at 50% and then charge it up. It really doesn't matter. But this is just a good practice because you get the most flight out of that battery as possible. If you start with a battery that has 30%, you're not really going to be flying for all that long. So fully charge your batteries before they fly. That way it can cycle all the way down to say 20, 25%. That is good for the battery and also good for your flight because you just get more time to fly. Now, moving on, the final thing to mention in these good practices is that you can view your battery settings within the DJI Go application. You can view the health for each of the different cells. You can view the voltage. You can change some of the different settings. You can also view how many times a battery has been charged. There's just a lot of really great information to be found within the battery settings in the DJI Go application, and I'd highly recommend you go ahead and check those out. Now, moving on from those good practices that you guys should follow in order to get the most life out of your DJI drone battery. We're now going to get into some of the tips you guys can take out with you when you're actually using your battery. So these are the usage tips I was telling you guys about in the beginning. So first up, you don't want to put any unnecessary strain on your battery. Now, I'm not telling you guys not to fly your drone because purchasing a drone and not flying it because you don't want to put any usage on the battery is kind of ridiculous. It's almost like buying a car and not driving it because you don't want to put miles on the odometer. I'm not telling you guys not to fly, but what I am trying to tell you guys is to not use these batteries as battery banks. I understand that DJI sells those little uh, accessories you can put on the battery in order to like charge other devices, but think about how expensive of a battery bank that is. $150 for around 5,000 milliamp hours. When you could buy one for 30 bucks, that's 20,000 milliamp hours over on Amazon. So at the end of the day, it's just not worth it unless you're in a dire situation, an emergency situation where you need to get power from that battery into like a phone or an iPad. I understand that, but do not regularly use this as a battery bank because it's just not a good use of the batteries. You're going to get less flight hours on the battery because you're using it for other things. Now, moving on, the next usage tip to take with you is don't fully deplete your battery. Now, look, chances are when you're flying, you're going to land between like 15 and 25%. So you're really never going to fully deplete the battery. So you're not going to take everything out of the battery, all that energy. It's not going to damage those cells because it's sitting empty. But if you do use it as a backup battery bank, you could potentially fully drain the battery charging up your iPad or say your iPhone. So again, just do not use it as a battery bank. Not a good idea. Now, the final three usage tips that make up our list here come directly from DJI. Specifically speaking, I found them on a PDF that they put out regarding the safety, the maintenance, and the care of their intelligent flight battery for the Mavic Pro. So this really pertains to all of their intelligent flight batteries. It's a great read. I'll leave that linked down below. But anyway, they say to not use it outside of the temperature range between 14 and 104 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 10 and 40 degrees Celsius. They say if you use it outside of that range, you risk permanent damage to the battery. And they also say if you use it above that 104 degree Fahrenheit or the 40 degrees Celsius threshold, you risk the battery catching fire or exploding. That's directly from that PDF. Don't quote me on it. I've never heard of these batteries exploding, but they do say that that is a potential possibility. Now, in terms of going below the lower threshold of negative 10 degrees Celsius or 14 degrees Fahrenheit, there's a lot of operations that happen in those lower temperatures, specifically speaking colder regions. I remember being up in Minneapolis and flying my drone in negative brutal temperatures. Shout out to my buddy, Jack Kramer, who invited me up there. But anyway, when we get to these lower temperatures, you wonder what can you do? Do you just let the drone sit there and heat up? Well, that is why we're now seeing these self-heating batteries come out for the Mavic 2 Enterprise and the Inspire 2. You actually get an icon in the top right corner that shows the batteries are heating up to put you within that operating temperature, which is a great idea. And I hope that DJI continues to push this out for the rest of their drones, or maybe make it like a different add-on if you want to purchase the more expensive batteries for people that live in temperatures where, or areas where the temperatures are colder. Now, moving on, they also say to not remove the battery from the drone when the drone is turned on. And I can attest to this because when you turn the drone on, it goes through its startup phase. 
but then when you turn the drone off it actually goes through a shutdown phase you can see the battery blinks and then it turns off and if you pull it right out of the drone while it's still turned on it kills power instantly which probably isn't that good for the drone we're really talking about the drone itself in this instant and not the battery itself so just make sure that when you go to take the battery out you turn it off let it shut down then pull the battery out and the final thing they have on this list or that I've put on the list is to keep the batteries away from water I think that's general common sense don't get the batteries wet yeah now, throughout this entire video, I have been referring to these batteries you guys see on the screen here as intelligent flight batteries. First of all, that's because that's what DJI calls them. But second of all, it's because there's a whole lot more under the hood than just some cells that power your drone. These batteries actually get their own firmware versions. And sometimes when you update the drone itself and the remote controller itself, there's also a firmware version for the battery. Now, these batteries don't get updated as often as the drone and the remote controller itself, but it is still very impressive that these batteries do a whole lot more thinking than you would think. Now, a lot of it is built into the software like Return to Home and Smart Return to Home, but there's also a chip inside of the actual battery itself that does a lot of the thinking for you. So as we get into some of these storage and transportation tips, you'll realize that while it is a lot of good things to practice and a good things to follow, the batteries do a lot of the thinking for you. So first of all, don't overcharge your battery. The batteries don't necessarily overcharge. Once they get to their full capacity, they stop administering power to the battery. So that's one way they're smart. Second of all, you don't want to charge the battery if it's too hot. And the good thing is, once you take a battery right out of the drone, it knows its temperature, it knows it's too hot. So once you plug it in, the battery will blink, say that it's waiting to cool down. And then once it's done cooling down, it immediately starts charging. So those are two things you really want to make sure you don't do to like a LiPo battery is overcharge them, or you also don't want to make sure they get too hot when you're charging. But these batteries do a lot of thinking for you, which is great. Now, when we begin to think about the storage of our batteries, the first thing that might come to mind is what temperature should I have these batteries sitting in? Well, DJI says right on their website that you want to store it in a temperature between 22 to 28 degrees Celsius, which is 71 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. That's usually the temperature inside of your house. And if you go a little bit over that and a little bit under that, look, it's really not going to be the end of the world. But I'd say like during the hot summertime and during the cold wintertime, do not leave these batteries inside of your car just to sit there and get really cold or really warm because that could prove to cause long-term damage to the cells. Now, also in terms of storage, what percent do we want to store these batteries at? Well, DJI recommends anywhere between 40 to 50%. You don't want to let them just sit there fully charged. You also don't, don't want to let them sit there fully dead and fully depleted. But the good thing is these batteries are smart. They're intelligent, as I've been saying. So it will auto discharge the battery after a certain set amount amount of days. So if you go within DJI's Go application, you can actually set the discharge day all the way up to 10 days. So after 10 days, the drone battery will begin to discharge on its own and you'll be left with a battery that's sitting there at 50% for storage purposes, which just takes a whole lot of thinking out of the equation. Now we've only got two more tips left here as it pertains to the storage and transportation of these batteries. I do want to discuss the terminals here on the battery itself. These are delicate, they're fragile. This is the part you don't want to get water into because it could damage some of these terminals. And if the terminals don't connect properly to the terminals on the drone itself, well, then the battery could short circuit. It could stop working in mid flight, or it could just totally not provide power to the drone itself. So you want to make sure that you protect these terminals when you're storing them and when you're transporting your drone. And the final thing I have here on this storage and transportation list, I've got a question mark at the end. It is battery bags. Should you buy battery bags? Should you buy an ammo box as I've seen people do and put their batteries inside of that? Uh, look, I think that DJI has a really great reputation with their batteries. I've never seen anything go wrong with them. I've never seen something happen to them like it did with Samsung and their Note 7 or their Note 8 where the phones were catching fire and exploding. Their batteries are made really well. I've never noticed anything aside from the swelling, uh, but I've never noticed any crazy damage happen with these batteries. So I really wouldn't recommend going out and buying battery bags for each one of your batteries, but as something that makes you feel a little bit safer, why not? They should be fairly cheap on Amazon. Anyway, guys, that pretty much wraps up everything I've got for you in terms of this full battery guide. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Let me know if you have any questions. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.